Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Frontend and Backend series. Today we will be learning how to send a post request from your frontend application to your backend application. As you guys already know, for the series we are using Flutter for our frontend and then Python for our backend. So let me quickly give you a rundown of what we have today. So as you guys can see here, we have our Flutter application up and running. Here, first we have a form that we will be using in order to take the user input. You guys might notice that we have input form deco under enable border and focus border. All it does is it just adds some border to our form. It gives uh, the form some circular edges and also just adds a width as well as a color. I'll show you guys here. Yeah, this is the decoration. And then our app consists of two buttons. One button will be used in order to send a post request and the other button will be used in order to get the data from the server. Now if we go up, as you guys can see that I've already done two imports. Uh, the first import that I've uh, performed is going to be HTTP that we will be using in order to send the request from our frontend app to the backend app and then uh, it's going to be dot .convert. So in order to set up HTTP, you guys just need a dependency in your pubspec.yaml file. So how you get this dependency is you guys just need to Google up Flutter package HTTP. Just click on the first link, come under installings, and under dependencies, you will see HTTP. Just copy this, go back to your pubspec.yaml file, paste it there. When you save it, you will see that Flutter goes ahead and installs it for you. And then just come back to your main dot file and just perform these two imports. Once your imports are done, let's start coding. So the first thing that we need to do is set up three variables. The first variable that we're going to set up is going to be called name. You guys can name it anything you want. It will contain the data that the user is going to input into the form. The second variable will be called final response. This basically will be displayed on the screen uh, once we get data from our server. And the last will be final and we will call it, let's just call it form key. So this will be used in order to interact with the form. Um, we will use it for validation as well as saving purposes. So let me just complete this. Perfect. So now once we have declared these variables, what we need to do is we need to associate that form key that we just declared to the form. So how we do that is you just type key and just say form key. Then another thing that we need to do is basically we need to figure out a way how to get the value that the user is going to input and assign it to name. So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is just type on saved. You will basically type it under text form field and then it will automatically fetch the value that the user is going to input. And all you need to do is you just need to assign that value to name. That basically sets up our form. Now let's go and set up our buttons. So the first button that we will set up will be for the post request. Now what we want here is basically when the user presses the button, the form gets validated and it's automatically saved. So in order to do that, first we need to create a function that will actually validate the form and save the data. So let's go up and let's create a function. So how we will do that is basically, let's say um, it will be a future because it won't be returning anything. So we will just call it void and let's just call it saving data. And it will be an asynchronous function. So let's just call it async. Now, first we have to validate the form. So how we do that is basically we do final validation and we just simply say form key that we declared right here. And then we just simply do run state and validate so this will go ahead and validate the form now in order to see whether the form was validated properly or no so what we will do is we will say if the form doesn't get validated just simply return basically what will happen is if the form doesn't get validated then this return will be executed and we will automatically break out of the function and let's say if everything goes well then all we need to do is we just need to save it. So we will do form key current state dot save. So now this function will take care of validating our form. And if everything goes well, then saving it. Let's copy this function, go down. And inside the button where we're going to set up our post request, let's just post it there. 
So now what will happen is basically as soon as the user is going to press the button, saving data will be executed. First, the form will be validated. If things doesn't go well, then the return statement will be executed and we will break out of the function. If everything goes well, then the form will automatically be saved, which will go ahead and then assign name the value that the user is going to input. So once we are done saving the form, let's set up the rest of the button. How we do that is first, uh, in order to send a post request, we need a URL to send it to. So we will say final URL. And for now, we will leave it as an empty string because we need to get this URL from our Flask application. After this, basically what we're gonna do is set up a response variable. So how we do that is we do final response equals to await. As you guys know, we are in an asynchronous function. We can use await and we will do http.post. So in the last video, I told you guys that HTTP has different kinds of requests that can be sent. In this video, we will be using a post request to send the data that the user is going to input in the form. Once we do that, as you guys can see that we need a URL to send it to. For now, the URL is empty. So we'll just leave it like that. And then for the body, we will need to encode it this time. In the last video, we decoded it. In this video, we will encode it into JSON format so that it can be sent back to our server script. So how we do that is we just do JSON and instead of decode this time, we will do encode and then we will pass in a key value pair. So let's just call it name and because we are sending name, so we will send that and that's done. This basically is what we need to do for our post request. We just need the URL. And as you guys know, we will get it from our Flask application. So let's go to our Flask application and set that up. So here in our Flask application, we are gonna perform three imports. The first one's gonna be Flask, then the other one's JSONify, and the third one is Request. Another thing that we are importing is JSON. So before we begin, we need a global variable that we are gonna manipulate once we get our post and get request sent from our front end. So let's just declare that. So here we will do response equals to an empty string. Once we're done doing that, now we are gonna set up the route. As you guys already know, in order to set up a route, all we need to do is we just need to do app.route, right? And then the route name, so it will be this. And in methods this time, instead of just doing the get method, we will do two methods. So the first one's going to be get, the other one's going to be post. We will be entertaining both our requests from just one function. You guys can do it with two, two, but then just to kind of make it simpler, we will just use one function for now. What we need to do now is just define a name. So we do that, name route. So now we will use a global keyword in order to get the response variable that we declared globally so that once we get our post or get request, we can manipulate it inside the function. So how we do that is just do global and response. Now we're gonna check whether the request that was sent by the user was a post request or a get request. And for that, we will use request that we imported from Flask and we use a method on request in order to see whether it was a post request or a get request. So we will say if request.method equals to post, then do the following. So now what we need is basically the data that the user is sending. So how we get that is first we will declare a variable. So let's just call it request data. And then we will use request dot data to get the data that the user is sending. Because it's still in a JSON format, we need to decode it. So how we do that is we will just reassign request data to the decoded version of the data. So it will be JSON dot loads. And then we will do request data that we declared here. And we will do decode. And we will decode it as UTF-8. So now what's happening is basically first we get the data that the user is sending and then we just simply decode it and reassign it to request data. Now once we're done doing that, we will extract what the user is sending. So in order to do that, we will just simply declare a variable name and then we will do request data name. So this will get the name that the user is putting in to the form. Then we will reassign the response variable to what we want to send back. So we will do response equals to, we will use an F string and then we will say hi. And then let's just use the name and we will say, this is Python. 
what's happening here is basically once we get the name then we are gonna just take the response variable that we are grabbing from our global state and then just reassign this whole string to the response variable and if we just leave it like this uh, once you like send a post request you will see a type error that's gonna occur so in order to avoid that all you guys need to do is just return an empty string this will automatically help you avoid that error now that we have set up our post side of things let's go back and set up the get method so before we do that let's just run the app in order to get the url so let's just run it you see the url copy that go back to your flask application and in url just paste it there and let me just go back we have name here so just don't forget to add name in the url and then copy this and let's go down to our get button and let's just paste it there because you are just using one function to perform both the things the url in both the functions will be the same so in order to set up the get button now it's pretty straightforward first we will declare a response variable to get the data so it will be final response equals to we will do await and then hdp.get and we will do url so this will get us the data now we just need to decode the data so how we do that is we just simply do decoded equals to json dot decode and just simply do response dot body just keep in mind that here we also have a response but because these two things are in separate functions so the response that we are grabbing here is going to be this one and not this one just to avoid some confusion uh, you guys can name it response one and response two but just keep in mind because these are two separate functions, so you won't have a problem of reassigning it once we do that we will decode it as map string the reason we decode it as map string and then dynamic is because the string is going to contain the key for the map and then dynamic is going to be the list or a key value pair that's going to be assigned to that particular key that is in string and then once we have decoded the data all we need to do is set state let's just do that and here in our final response we will just reassign it to decoded response and then just copy this final response go here and, and just copy it there now before we go to the app to test it out don't forget that we still need to set up the get uh, request in our uh, flask application so let's just quickly set that up uh, what we're doing here is first we are seeing whether it was a post request now if it's not a post request then we know that it's going to be a get request so we just simply do else and we just simply return jsonify and it will be name and this will be response all right so this uh, sets up our get request so now what's happening in total is we have set up a global variable known as response then we are grabbing that global variable in order to manipulate it and then first we check whether it was a post request or a get request if it's a post request then we get the data from the request that has been sent by the user and then we decode it and assign it back to request data then we get the name that the user has input in the form and then we reassign response with this string and then we just use an, a return empty string in order to avoid the error and if it's not a post request that means when we are sending our get request then we just simply return a json formatted uh, key value pair so now here we have called it name but if we go back you guys will see that we have called it response here so let's just change it to name now when we enter the name here and we press send it should automatically send a post request to our flask application and then we press the get button then we should get the response from that so let's just test it out let's just enter flutter and press send now when we press get we should get the response from our flask application let's just press that and you guys will see that we got the response that we are sending from our flask application so this class was a really basic tutorial of how to send a post request from your front-end application to your back-end application i hope this video gave you a good understanding of how to actually send a post request if you guys like the video do hit the like and subscribe button thank you